All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, according to mental health, um, first aid, to be able to take care of those around you, you need to, first of all, take care of yourself. And um, it, it's, it's like um, the advice that we're giving when we go on airplanes, when they say that you have to put on your own oxygen ma uh, mask before trying to help someone else with theirs. Now, it's important to protect your mental health and well-being every day so that you can handle daily stress and be effective helping others when they need you. Now, protecting your mental health will also help you take care of your physical health, right? And of course, those are... Um, it also recognizes emotional and spiritual needs. It fosters, um, fosters and sustains strong relationship and uh, um, achieve balance in different areas of your life. So how do we start right, to take conscious effort on safeguarding our mental health? And ultimately, um, we're asking the men and the women around us, right? We want to ask our men especially, uh, how do you think it's important? I mean, how do you begin to take mental health a lot more seriously? All right, so before we even go into this conversation, right, I, want us, I wanted us to um, give a bit of context to mental health, of course, because they say that some of the causes of mental health um, challenges or issues that we have or the mental health breakdown that we see Right now, I mean, according to WHO, that's the World Health Organization, some of the causes are social and economic inequalities, um, protracted conflicts, violence, public health emergencies, you know, which affects the whole population, threatening the progress towards um, improved well-being, right, generally. And of course, these are just a few to mention that are the reasons why people just go into, um, what's it called, that state of... Um, depression or whatever it is that has to do with mental health challenges. I mean, again, some people, it's very difficult for them to handle loss, right? Um, people die around you or people, um, for instance, lose their jobs and all of that. You are just not in that mental frame to accept, you know, any kind of loss. If it's be it loss of life, loss of revenue, loss of friendship, you know, it just occurred to me that even these people that are jackpying and going and all of that, you're leaving some people behind, you know, whether you like it or not, it's going to affect yeah, their mental well-being. Because sometimes, you know, you just believe, okay, there's somebody there for me. I'm and all of a sudden, that person just disappears. All over again. Now you're starting all over again and you're just hollow. You're just there by yourself, right? So, I mean, those are like, you know, let me just put, I mean, I was just trying to put a context to it. Yeah. And thankfully this year, um, the theme for Mental Health Day is well-being for all, a global pri priority. So it's not just a particular gender is everybody child or adult generation. or generation thank you everybody child adults young people old people whatever it is it is priority for everyone right so but i just want to hear your thoughts first of all let me let me um let me hear uh, alero's thoughts because i saw that you put out a post on social media about mental health you gave us about five tips you know to look out for your mental health you are a strong advocate for mental wellness and mental health maybe let me start with you first of all i'm so um i accept my condolences for your loss right i mean you are in the middle of something right now and i, I can imagine how this is also affecting you you know emotionally but let me hear your thoughts alero on mental health why it's important that we must safeguard our health mentally um Hi, hi everyone. Um, we, we, we actually do not throw a lot of light um, to mental health as much as we should because the tiniest of things can actually trigger you that can, you know, scatter the course of your day. And, and, I, and I mean, it can be as little as, you know, just remembering somebody that passed on or just, you know, maybe uh, you were eating a food that tasted the way maybe somebody passed on is really like, you know, it can trigger, anything can trigger your mental health. But it's really important to be aware and also to realize that these things are really, it's really normal for you to feel overwhelmed. It's really normal for you to feel sad. But don't just keep quiet or let it go. For instance, a friend of mine passed um, a few weeks ago. And today is um, a candlelight procession. You know, we are all young, young. A lot of young people are here, you know, crying and, you know, saying a lot of things. And trust me, her family as well is actually really sad because she died at 26. So it's, it's really um, not something that anybody wishes for. However, we all need to just be aware of the, of, you know, the, the delicacy of, of how your mental health should be taken you know, care of because any little thing can really trigger it. And all we have to do is just be, be aware of everything that's happening so that we can manage it. You know, that, that's basically how it starts. We can always seek help. 
you know, um, you know, talk to people that you trust about whatever it is because anything can trigger your mental health to break down. I have a friend of mine that almost committed suicide a couple of weeks ago, all because she was feeling overwhelmed with life. And, you know, for some people, they might think, oh, it's not a big deal now. This is the thing that makes you feel like you want to kill yourself. However, she doesn't see it that way. She just feels like the world is too stressful and she can't deal. So everybody just has their mental weight and capacity. And sometimes it's just always good to open up and you know, speak up and just sit down if you, if you need it. All right. Okay. Let me hear your thoughts, um, um Mary, because some have argued, you, are, you belong to another generation, at least not from my own generation. And some have argued that it seems that we are breathing very, very weak people right now. Because any little thing you just said, oh, you're affecting my mental health. Oh, you're affecting, like, you're, you're, you know, like, is it that there is no, that doggedness, that tenacity anymore. It seems like every little thing you just touch right now, especially for Gen Z. You know, they just go overboard with this mental health. No, 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 you're affecting my mental health. I, I can't take this. I can't do this. They just abandon everything and all of that. It doesn't seem like um, they, they are building that toughness, that resilience and all of that. But let me hear your thoughts, you know, with mental health, right? <laughs> and I hope I'm not affecting your it's, mental health. <laughs> it's such a funny topic because I've had so many arguments with so many people on this. But to be honest, I can't even lie. I feel like my generation has uh, might have done it a bit too far, you know, because when I hear some cases from what employers are actually facing from employees, I'm like, how about this is totally unrealistic. Somebody starts a job for one week and they're like, you know what, my mental health. So um, it's, it's a tough one, but it's very important. It's very important because I feel like the previous generation far back has just sucked in a lot of things. Um, it goes as far back as, you know, just look at growing up and you see a child crying. I don't know if it's a Nigerian thing, or, but we're just more used to beating the child, you know, rather than nurturing the child. You, you know, when those days when we go and plait our hair in all these small shows, you see a child just crying, crying, crying. And, and these are early stages where you need to nurture the child, where they need that attention, they need that love, they need that care. You can be, you can be strong and emotional. You don't have to be tough where you totally block out your emotions. God gave us emotions for a purpose. So why does everything have to be so ruggedy? Ah, why, why are you crying? Why should you Talk cry? Do you understand? For a, for a man, the reason why men can't speak up now is because from an early stage, they've been told, why would you be crying? Don't, well, you, as know in, don't you know you're a man? You know, stand up for yourself. You know, you can't talk about, even when they're depressed, even when they're facing... Everybody can make, anybody can make mistake. Mm. Do you understand? Anybody can lose someone. We all have different ways of dealing with things. And that is what mental health is. All my generation now is trying to speak up is, look, we have traumas that we've all been dealing with. And it's high time, the earlier you figure out these traumas, the earlier you're able to heal from it, the better for you. You see some people, they just react Something just happened and they're just shouting. And you just think, is this person mad? The person is not mad. He, he has just become used to expressing himself that way. Or we go on the road. And I remember I would tell my mom, why are you shouting? Why You don't need to shout to communicate your point. But me, in my heart of heart, I know that there are some moments where you actually need to be mad. Because, I mean, it's Lagos. Are mm -hmm. you going to talk to an agri like, oh, hi, so... <laughs> are, are, yeah, you, are you okay do you understand yeah. so but mental health is really really important because you see especially in the workforce a lot of people are just they're not living their lives they're just moving they're like walking cops Existing. do you understand and it's not nobody's even saying your job has to be the best everybody at some point even the rich ones that you know you look everybody would face challenges do you understand? But how are you able to handle your challenge? Mm. Do you run away from your challenges or 
are you are you healthy enough to face your challenge to understand that oh, okay this is a tough time i'm going through you know maybe i should take a step back one step at a time you know are you and how gone? is also the organization even helping you to understand or are they just or are they just putting pressure 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 mm. on you me in my office they used to tell me that uh, i'm the soft life girl <laughs> i don't like trouble and i told them i said well when is necessary I put myself on, on the feet to run. But I'm not a running cop. When I left here yesterday, I put my phone on do not disturb. I, even, I woke up to messages this morning. Oh, I've been trying to reach you. Your phone is switched off. The next day, we'll continue the conversation again. I won't die. Hmm. I just, because if, I, I look at it. If I'm empty, what am I going to give to you? Absolutely. Hmm. I can't give anything to you. Absolutely. Hmm. Ah, it's a very interesting topic. Very, for very, very I important love matter. It. Very, very interesting. <laughs> so I, I get all the angles that you're talking about, and it's the care. And again, because we, we want to just piggyback a bit to why men, you know, it is important for us to start to have healthy men. Because if you go again on social media, you go online, you go a lot, you see a lot of things happening. So when you see a man doing excessive drinking, excessive womanizing, those things are also things, yes, they're like suppressants. They're trying to distract their minds away from something. So when you see that there's a big problem, right, if we trace it back, there is something that has been suppressed that somebody's just trying to express, and at the end of the day, they now go overboard with that expression. But Alero, let me come to you, right, because, again, mental health is not something that we... We can we we can exhaust we, can, we can't even stop we can't exhaust the conversation, <laughs> but hey, let's talk work environment, right? Because I I mean, Mary raised a very important um, point, right? Work environment, toxic environment. I mean, like there are some places that I just don't want to be there because it's always every time I go there, you feel the energy, you feel the the negativity just brewing around, and people are having to endure this all the time. And because of the economic state of the situation, you really can't even say, you know what, take your job, I'm not doing it again, and I walk away. But how do we begin to handle some of these stresses that come around? Because we cannot avoid some. There are some I can just put my phone on, do not disturb, and I will be fine. But there are some you cannot run away from. So how do we begin to walk ourselves out, you know? Um, let me hear your thoughts, Alero. Yeah, I mean, um, I was actually going to quick, let me quickly say something about uh, men's mental health before I, I, I speak on that. Go ahead. Quickly. So one thing, one thing I wanted to just say is that, you know, for men, I feel like the pressure on them is a lot because, you know, traditionally they are the providers. So a lot of times when you hear that a man is committing suicide or he's in acute depression, most of the time it's actually because of the pressure of providing or one thing or the other. And because they are not able to, it's, feel, it's, it's like it's their, it's their responsibility to do something. So when they are not able to do that thing, first of all, they don't even communicate it because they feel like they should be the one handling it. So a lot of them go into some type of deep depression that a lot of them, a lot of times their wife or their girlfriends or their siblings or family members are not even aware of that. Like she said, working cops, they're just working and doing whatever, but deep down inside they are struggling. So a lot of times, it's speaking of that usually helps. And, you know, when speaking towards, um, you know, mental health at the workplace, I have personally experienced it a couple of times. You know, sometimes when you feel burnt out, you feel like you've done a lot, but it's not, it doesn't seem like it's working. In some situations, you might be in, in a toxic workplace whereby, you know, there's so many negative things going on. However, you have to be able to, you know, because a lot of times, some people find it hard to separate work from personal life, mm -hmm. which you have to try to do it. Because some people, they just come to the office, they do what they, they can, and they go home. So a lot of people remove their, their personality from their work. So if you find yourself in that kind of environment that your work is actually toxic and it's not enabling you to sleep well or it's not even allowing you to do like your day-to-day -day activities, personally, I would advise you take a break. Or if there is, for instance, where the organization, okay, sorry, the organization I used to work at before I moved, they had um, an employee, you know, assistant program whereby all the staff in the organization have access to therapists and mental health institutions that they can always relate their issues with. The bottom line is, no matter where you face it, either at work or, you know, within your personal space or within your, you know, your network, anywhere you are, there's always something that could trigger your mental health. You can have a very nasty boss. You can even have a very insensitive friend or a very insensitive family member. However, you as an individual, you have to learn 
it's hard, but you have to learn to consciously, you know, put things in place to, if it's possible to remove yourself from something that will cost your mental health and your life, please do. And I think that's the reason why a lot of Gen Zs are quick to <laughs> run away when something happens and they're like, ah, no, my mental health. <laughs> Because some, sometimes we, we that we are the older generations, we can just, you know, be resilient and say, you know what, for this next couple of weeks, I'm not going to smile at work. Because honestly, even recently, it kind of happened to me that I was feeling overwhelmed at work. I mean, sometimes work, if I'm most of the time now, work takes a lot of my time. Then I'm not able to do other things. So sometimes you're like, this work stuff is really giving me a big headache. Should I run away? Well, you can't run away because, first of all, you have responsibilities. Secondly, you have, you know, people that are looking up to you. Then thirdly, are you going to run away from every battle? Life on its own is a battle. But we have to learn self-awareness to be able to say, okay, you know what? Observe your mood. Observe the attitude around you. If somebody is saying something to trigger you, it's okay for you to take a, take a walk. Hmm. It's okay for you to put your phone and do not disturb. There is nobody then buy phone for you. Nobody then buy this app for you. So you are responsible for yourself. Hmm. It's true now. If somebody should say, oh, I was trying to call you yesterday. If you are calling my phone and you are giving me anxiety, I will turn off my phone at that point and I will come back to you when I can. Because there are a lot of people that they are driving home and they get a heart attack. They are driving home and they just slum. Why? Because they are pressured and thinking about, you know, a lot of things. Some people, anxiety is another thing that could even kill you because you are scared, you're worried of the next step. But I feel like you can't avoid it. Mm. At the workplace, at your place of business, I, I even have, there's even a family member that, there's a lady that is even a family that is causing anxiety. And sometimes she'll be like, can we even choose our family? Because right now, this, this particular person wants me dead. Wow. And I can't deal. And some, yeah, it's that bad that the, the, her brothers actually want her dead. But what will she do? She has to remove herself from that environment. Mm. So sometimes you are your own savior. Because like people say, you were born alone and you will die alone. Mm. So whatever decision you need to make to help your life become better, you, you have, have to, to take it. it. All right, let's you, go you there. Let's Absolutely. go on a very short break, right? When we come back from the break, we'll continue the conversation because I actually want to also address the issues around stigma and discrimination because I, I believe that it is that stigma that make a lot of men shy away from issues around um, mental health. Stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, we're discussing the topic safeguarding our mental health, right? We just want to safeguard our mental health. And please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 If you're a man and probably you've been through um, mental health issues and you really just want to tell us, you know, how you got out of it or if you're still in it, please feel free to share your message with us. Um, also, you can tweet at us at Wayshow Africa One on the hashtag Wayshow. Um, uh, Mary, you said you want you wanted twenty four hours for this topic. Uh -huh. Trust me, even one week cannot even exhaust the topic. But hey, let's discuss stigma and discrimination, right? Because again, a lot of people when they when they hear that you are going through, and that's why I'm a bit careful when I see someone going through mental health challenges. But again, sometimes it's a bit confusing, right? Because again, it seems like. Um, when you try to walk that person out of the, the the process, it seems like you are also maybe like, I don't know, you, you become you become like you're walking around like Egg on eggshells around the person. Because I don't want that to be. I want to be able to still tell you the truth and still tell you that okay, yes, while safeguarding your mental health. But is that one is another story for another day. But let's understand these issues of stigma. Why do we have stigma around it? Is it that it's, it's so much of a big deal that I'll say, oh, no, I'm going through a lot of uh, no, emotions? It's because we're just, as a society in general, we've been used to suppressing things. Hmm. We've been used to not speaking up. I mean, look at marriages in our parents' generation and look at marriages now. A lady mar marries today and almost um, the guy is messing up. Women are empowered now, you know, so it's like everybody can call the bluff. In those days, can the woman talk? Even mm. the children say, oh, daddy has come back from work. Everybody runs inside. But now you have your five-year-old son who is chatting you. My friend put up a post and he said, oh, the son wrote, oh, dad, I need help with my homework. He too responded, I'm in a meeting, I'll call you after the meeting. 
we've grown. You know, there's a lot of self-awareness now. It all boils down to self-awareness. I, for one, I understand the correction part. I'm really not good at correction. Mm. You know, I'm a, I'm a very figure-it-out-yourself kind of person. And life has taught me. If somebody tells me and I don't listen, subconsciously in my head, I know that one way or the other, I will figure it out. Mm. So I feel like the stigma around it basically is just that it, we are used to suppressing pain. Mm. We're used to suppressing these triggers. I had my own fair share, and when I was talking about it with my mom, she kept asking, why are you looking at the negative? Why are you looking at... Me? And I said, I'm not, I'm not bringing it up to spite you. I'm not trying to tell you you didn't do a good job as a mother. I'm just only expressing how it affected me mm. because it is still affecting me. And I want to change. Mm. So I have to bring it. You have to go through the fire before you come out. And a lot of people are not ready for that. Let's be honest about it. Mm. A lot of us are not ready for that. A lot of companies are not ready to face the reality of, hey, this is a toxic environment. Mm. It's all about profit-driven, profit-driven. You know, we have to make the profit. And if you die, okay, there's this young lady now who... Um, Alera is at her. How old is she? She's 26. It's shocking. You can pass out at any age. We shouldn't wait for death to tell us that, hey, this life we have is mm. not our own and it can go at any point in time. It shouldn't get to that stage. Before you say you're going to therapy, they're looking at you as, what is wrong with you? It shouldn't mm. be. Mm. Because a lot of people need therapy. Absolutely. It shouldn't be something where you can't, you know, people don't want to speak up about it. It's almost like, ah, if I say it now, they will say I've come with the mental health card. Mm. If I talk now, I will say I'm being... Why are you playing that card? Do you yeah. understand? Mm. But it's affecting you. You are dying, whether you like it or not. You're not living a fulfilled life. You don't have to be a billionaire to live a fulfilled life. And mental health is not just about, oh, okay, I just want to play the card so I can, you know, go and chill and lay on a yacht or something and come back. It's not really about that. It's a very, very important thing. It's your well-being, how you relate with people as well. It matters so much. You go to the club and a lot of people are just drinking away their sorrows. Sure. And they wake up the next morning and they're still as depressed. Mm -hmm. Even the word depression self, mm. saying it outside is like, eh, what's that? Don't you say are, that. Don't say that. Don't you're say, covered in the do, blood do of Do you Jesus. understand? Like, <laughs> and let's, let's just face it. People mm. are depressed. True. Someone has a miscarriage and doesn't know how to handle what she's going through. Hmm. But you want her to still be strong and come out like everything is it's okay. Fine. It's, it's not, not okay. Fine. I always say to people, it is okay not to be okay. Do you understand? Like, don't form toughness. If I have to cry, me, I will cry. Look, I if used I to... Have, do you understand? I yeah. used to be very emotional. I, I am still very emotional. And I'm very expressive with my social media. So what I had to do is, you know what? You also have to understand that not everybody is going to be able to take what you're putting out the right way. Mm. I was very expressive in terms that I could be at work and if I have a breakdown, it's so funny, but I would actually record myself crying. And my friends, my older friends are like, why would you do that? Mary, you're messing up. Why would you see, make someone see your tears? Never, don't do that. And little me, I'm just thinking, what? <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with it? Now? I'm just crying. Everybody cries as well, mm. you know. But the, I understand the society perspective, you know. You have to come out. You shouldn't let people see your weakness, you know. Even in the laws of power, you know. You shouldn't actually allow people to see your weakness. But there's a human side of it is okay to be vulnerable. <laughs> okay. Let me, let me, vulnerable. Let me hear Lero. It's okay. <laughs> it is <Please>. very okay. <laughs> and it's okay to go to therapy. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. Absolutely Alera. nothing. <laughs> Are I'm you sorry. Like, I, I, I really wish I was at the studio today because in my head is, what am I supposed to do with this emotion I have? You're telling me not to express it. Mm. What am I supposed to do with it? I feel overwhelmed. I'm feeling hopeless. I'm feeling like things are not working and you're telling me to bottle it up how mm. because it is the process of bottling it up that that makes it explode in fact implodes and you know when something implodes it's even yeah. worse than when it explodes yeah so it's it's it's, it's horrible that people say that they let nobody see your tears it shows that you're strong what are you being strong for mm. who 
why are you pretending for? Because the, you, who needs the strength? It's you that need it. And you're not even strong. So why would I act it? Mm. Because a lot of times, I don't have, like, I, I mean, I, I was, I was going to tell a story of, you know, that there are, two, there are different types of mental health that some, some people, they are physically healthy, but their mental health is something that, you know, they have issues with. Mm. So imagine when you are both physically unhealthy and that you are also mentally unhealthy. It's like the worst of it all. Yeah. And stigmatization is actually something that even makes it worse. I remember when I used to work at an e-commerce company, there was a lady that she didn't know her diagnosis. She was always fainting. During meetings, she, the girl can just pass out. We are talking about something, the girl will just pass out. Sometimes she can be talking to you and the next thing she has fainted. In the office, people stigmatize her. It was a problem because she didn't know what was wrong with her. But it was affecting her mental health because every other person was like, oh, this girl is crazy or this. You know, she couldn't even express herself all the time because of this. Hmm. But at the end of the day, when she was able to find the solution, she mentioned that her mental health affected her more than her physical health because of the stigma of everybody looking and saying, oh, what is wrong with this person? So a lot of times we are not able to control it, but the, the truth of the matter, like I keep saying, is that you have to be aware of yourself and you have to you have to put yourself first. Absolutely. It's not about you. It's about me. So if I'm actually going to, that's why most people don't even like to express that they are feeling in a certain type of way. In the workplace, you're giving your subordinates, well, let me even use bosses, for example, a boss that is always, you know, that is always sweet, all of a sudden starts to act like a terrible human being. If you really dig deep, this person is basically using you as his shield because he or she is probably going through their own, you know, personal trauma that they feel like the best way to defend themselves or to, to mask it or to guide it is by, you know, you know, terrorizing somebody else or being toxic. So most of the time, you have to also be, you know, considerate of other people. That's why they say nobody knows best because the person that is even stigmatizing you has no idea. So mm. a lot of times they need education. Absolutely, I, I, and I'm happy you took us there because I remember yeah. that I remember when I was going through some issues with uh, myself. I mean, my older sister will always she's the one that would say, "Come on, toughen up," you know. You see, in fact, the birth of my child, right, my first child. When I was having the when I was having the child, when they had um, given me the in, in, they had induced me, mm. so the thing was so painful. I kept on crying. She said, ah, "Can't you toughen up? Any small pain, you just be crying." Because she's the kind of person that she can stomach pain like that. I don't have tolerance for pain. She was now like, you know, toughen up, toughen up. I said, "This thing is painful." So I was so I was so pained that the time she was having her first child, I was not around. But guess what? In the delivery room, she kept on calling that they should please call me. She started apologizing to me that she didn't know that this is the pain I went through. But that is an aside. So the same thing, when I was going through an emotional roller coaster, <coughs> a period I was going through that, she actually said, oh, I toughen up. Can't you just, you know, come snap out of it and all of that? She couldn't understand. But I think what I now did was to help. Now she's a lot more sensitive. She's a lot more understanding. You know, but you see, again, it took patience for me to be able to explain to her that this is how I'm feeling. So when you see me cry, just let me cry, right? Don't, don't act like because you can handle it, then I should be able to handle it, right? Even if we're siblings we're this, from the same womb, it does not mean that how I can handle my own threshold for pain is the same threshold for pain. So now she's a lot more sensitive. She'll say, ah, make her not talk anything. I make for you to say that they affect your mental health and all of that. But she's now seeing it that now being a lot more um, empathetic has even built the relationship better. Right? So now we discuss things. You know, she's not, because she used to say, no, 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 I'm very blunt, I'm very blunt. All that bluntness now, she has calmed down, she has toned down to understand that there are some things that you have to empathetically follow up on, right? Not just say you want to just say it as it is and just blot it out. I'm somebody that if I'm in a very deep emotional pain, my, my quickest way to express is to cry. So, and, you know, I mean, there was a day, I can never forget that day. My friends took me out to the beach. I cried literally from like 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. The tears was just flowing, but I was just standing there. I wasn't talking. But I just, and guess what? By the time I was done crying, that was the end of the pain and everything. So there are different coping mechanisms that people have. I just need people around. When you see somebody going through some form of deep pain, don't, don't um, trivialize it. Don't push it aside and say, no, it's nothing, right? We're discussing mental health today. People are saying, what are they discussing? Do you understand? It is 
part, like, we, I can comfortably say that 80% of the problems that we are facing today, or even 95% of the problems that we are facing today, if you trace it back, mm -hmm. it has a link to the, yes, to the mental health, mental state of that person. You see a man taking out a um, cane or a woman bringing out a knife to stab a man. You see all the sorts of things that happen, all the vices that are happening. A man cheating even on his wife or a woman cheating on her husband. Everything can be traced to the fact that these people are not emotionally stable. So imagine if we start to pay attention to the emotions of people. Because, you know, because pain, emotional pain is not something you can see. You can, so if I had a cut here in my hand now, mm -hmm. it is okay for you to be empathetic. You say, oh, sorry, you sympathize with me. But if I didn't have any single pain, I was looking all glammed up and everything, you can't see the pain that I have on my inside. So it's difficult for you to say, you know what, Uwa, I understand what you're going through. So that's why emotional pain, and that is the biggest pain that controls the overall well-being of the of human nobody. being, right? But we don't pay attention to these things because we think that it's not physical, we can't see it, and yet we just trivialize it. So I just feel like everybody around, try to pay a little more attention on the people around you. You know, study their emotions, study their mood. You know, when you need to be quiet around them, be quiet. When you need to speak, speak and speak with love and understand it. Yeah, you wanted to say something quickly? Um, I think another thing that has really helped me is self-awareness. Self-awareness in, term, in terms of because I've dealt with my pain, you know, either I've found help via through my meditation, through my YouTube videos, since I'm a, I know it myself, I don't want you to help me, I already know that you can't help me because from what you're saying, so it's fine, I'm like, it's me and my God, we're going to figure this out. And what's really helped me is self-awareness, you know, getting to know myself. I'm now, I pulled, I told my colleague yesterday, and I said, oh, it's like I'm forgetting, I'm beginning to talk too much. Talk too much in terms of, I'm beginning to over talk, over express myself. You need to know who and who you're talking to. Mm. I have people who I'm very comfortable with. I mean, comfortable to say, I can say anything about how I feel and they're not gonna judge me. So I now pinch myself to say, hey, you're stepping outside of that boundary mm. and don't be surprised if you start getting this same feedback, you know, that you used to get before. Mm. Yes, you don't want to get it, so keep to yourself. It's you that has your problem, Abby. Mm -hmm. You know, solve it. If you need to go to therapy, go, go to, to therapy. therapy, you know. But know yourself. Self-awareness would really, really, really help. Really I want help to, you. absolutely. Let, let me bring Alero, because you, you mentioned five steps. Physical activity, yeah. that's um, um, exercising, learning a new skill, collect, connecting with other people, practicing kindness. I like that part, practicing kindness. And being mindful, like you're staying in the present, right? You know, yeah. how do these things really help your mental state? Then we can then take comments and wrap up. Yeah, I mean, most of these things is, is the consciousness that helps you. Like she mentioned, being aware of yourself being able to understand your triggers, being able to understand what, what is the thing that makes me unhappy? What is that thing that, that brings me into that deep thought of, of um, sadness or that makes you mentally unstable? If you're able to identify, you know, that particular trigger, it helps you. Being physically active is actually something that, you know, it, I feel like it's like a drug. The moment you start to exercise, you will definitely feel way better and way stronger than when you started. You know, I wanted to quickly say something. Um, most of the time, the best way to stop stigma, right, is actually for you to, first of all, go and get help. Go to a therapist, go to an organization that actually have professionals that would speak to you, professional psychotherapists that would really speak to you. Then they would actually invite your loved ones to your sessions it's, it's a compulsory thing that happens to everybody so far as you're actually going for therapy the therapist will invite your loved ones and that is how they easily and subtly break it down for them to understand because mm. a lot of times when you're going through your, your mental issues you need one, at least one person you trust support that you can system. have these conversations with yes like a support system and because because of how delicate some of these, these conversations can be you can't have it with everybody mm. but the first step is go get help in your process of getting help, it is important and compulsory that the psychotherapist invite at least one person that is that means so much to you 
to be involved in your recovery process mm. because it's not one day it's not one year it's not even five years it's a con continuous, continuous awareness practice yes. that would help you become stronger and better mm. thank you all right so yes. let's take comments um from our viewers okay Good evening, ladies. Interesting topic. My mental, health, my mental health was tampered with during COVID when my husband was really sick. I faced a lot of issues from close family members who were waiting for what to grab. Thank God I had few friends that were with me. I had access to materials at work that helped me. I was going for workouts every day and then listened to some messages that helped me. After that, I expressed my mind and told all what they did and now placed everyone where they ought to be. So happy in my space now and have so much peace. You need to take charge of your life. It wasn't easy, but you'll be fine if you are open to trusted few and seek help where needed. Thanks, BC. Thank you so much, BC. Um, Alero, you have a comment? Yeah, I mean, um, I would just say that everybody should... Okay, sorry, I have a comment. From... Give me a second. Okay, so mental breakdown... Oh, did we lose Alero? Okay, let me take my comment. Um, good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying? Hashtag ways safeguarding our mental health. We need to accept our mental status, whether good or bad. When we discover that we are not sound mentally, it is advisable to go for serious therapy to solve the problem on ground. If not, the problem will persist. Thank you so much. He says, Sister Owa said it all. It is okay not to be okay. She gave an example that when you are in pain emotionally, you should show it. Um, we are all humans. Sister, oh, I love your dress. It's like you want to fly. <laughs> My name is Daniel Elo. Yes, I want to fly. Alera, are you back? Okay, if Alera is not back, let me take her comment. It says, mental breakdown is real. The amount of people with mental issues are unbelievably high. But there is poor diagnosis and documentation. I'm a doctor and I have seen a lot. Greetings to Mary Oma. We love you. <laughs> All right, I was just going to say on a light note, Gen Z's, I take God beg you now. You people are also affecting our mental health. Any smart thing, you're affecting my mental health. You, you said you're affecting my mental health because now we don't even know what to, what to do. I mean, I mean, the world is changing so fast, right? And you don't even know what you would say that would offend, you know, someone. I just want us to be a lot more understanding, right? We'll keep talking about mental health because it's not something that we'll, we, we, we can stop talking about That's because all. this is actually real. Uh, but I just want to say that, I mean, if we all came together with so much love, empathy, and understanding, we would definitely rise above this because it is really eating deep into some of the behaviors that we're seeing. And, all, and, you know, people are now expressing it in violent manners and all of that. It's a result of how bad we have degenerated emotionally. But Mary... You had a final comment? <laughs> um, I just want to say, let's try to be mindful. Mindful, a little exercise you could do is just take a minute and be conscious of your breath. Mm. Um, you can feel your heart beating. Just take a second and just be aware of that. Bring yourself back to it, to, to where you are at the moment, you know, and that would really help you at every point in time. Keep figuring out yourself, understand your triggers, move away when you need to move away, come out when you need to come out. Guess what, man? It's your life. Absolutely. It's your life when you're in control. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alero. Ah, we had to drag her out. <laughs> but thank you, Mary. I think we had a fantastic conversation. We did. We now, did. please, um, before we go, do ensure you follow us everywhere at Wish Your Africa, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. Um, Facebook, Twitter, at Wish Your Africa. You can drop a comment. More importantly, follow all our engagements on social media. Like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed today's quote, here it is again. Um, I believe the biggest stigma right now with mental health is that a lot of men are not talking about it. I mean, so we are hoping that we have more men come out to talk about it as we then have women, you know, love and support, you know, their spouses. And thank you to everyone that shared their comments you know, um, with us. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.